beautiful people. I hope you guys are having a great day. Okay. It is Sunday. Okay. And we have been gathered here today. <laughs> I'm a hot mess. You know, I'm getting all in my church mode, my church vibes. Okay. Because we are discussing here on this channel, Pretty Girl Loves Trap content. BMF season one, episode three, love all and trust few few people okay because we can't be trusting everybody up here in these you know criminal streets and whatnot all right so the episode begins all right with a flash back okay we are back to the you know mid-teen situation you know with the the brothers all right and so we see key he, you know t he's chefing it up you know making a big ass Fat ass good burger, okay? <laughs> it was very plumped, okay? And so, Meech comes into the kitchen and he's looking at the size of this burger, you know, because it's very enormous. And he was like, um, you better be making me and little sis a burger as well, okay? And so, T was like, nah, bruh. Um, yeah, you got, you know, little leftovers in the fridge. So, Meech goes into the fridge and, you know, he has enough to make a little Swedish meatball. And he's like, oh, nah, bro, bro, you about to go ahead and split this, okay? Because you just hogging all the, you know, <laughs> hamburger meat, okay? And hamburger meat, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those, you know, those meats you can make anything with it, okay? You can make spaghetti, a hamburger, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, one of those hood favorites, all right? And it's, you know, low-key delicacy, if you will. So, you know, T was like, nah, bro, I am not sharing, okay? This is a meal for one. So, of course, Meech, he is not feeling that. So, they begin to fight and tussle. And lo and behold, they break all of Mama's china, okay, in her little china cabinet. And the little sister, she was in the living room dancing and whatnot. She comes and she was like, oh, y'all going to get it, okay? And so <laughs> um, T was like, uh, we need to go, you know, figure this out. We need to clean it up. And Meech was like, for what? Okay, we are already going to get our behinds whooped. And so T comes with the idea to super glue everything together. Of course, they do a horrible job, a very horrible job doing so. And the mom, of course, realized what has been done. And so she's asking, you know, who done it? Who done it? Who's, who, who needs to go ahead and snitch, you know what I'm saying, on the other because one of y'all had did it. But technically, they all they both did it. But of course, being brothers, you know what I'm saying, they trust each other. They stick together, okay? They did not squeal, okay? So you know how it is when you don't tell on the person who did it. Y'all all getting y'all behinds, whoop, okay? And the mom, you know what I'm saying, she proceeds to whip their tails and... Yeah, I've never seen a beating when nobody is crying. And I'm a little confused, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if they're so-called too old or she's got a weak hand, got a little arthritis or whatnot, because they was not crying at all. <laughs> I'm like, well, shit, I would have fessed up to the beating as well if it's not going to hurt. Like, mm -mm, I remember those days like, nah, bro. <laughs> I used to hate when um my stepdad used to tell me, find the belt. You know what I'm saying? I used to get the most flimsy belt. Then he used to get mad at me. For getting the flimsy belt? I'm like, bro, like, I'm smart. Like, what do you think I'm going to do is get the good belt? I'm not going to get the good belt you just bought. I'm going to get the belt that you just had around the house the past several years that, you know, worn and whatnot, you know, to lessen the blow. And he should have appreciated, you know what I'm saying, my train of thought. But, yeah, that, that didn't quite work. But, anywho, y'all, I'm getting a little off track. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? This scene was to illustrate how one, T, um, aka Terry, he's a little selfish and inconsiderate, okay? He has these little ways about him, okay? And um, Meech is always willing to check him about that, you know what I'm saying? And I love, you know, their trust and bond as brothers, okay? They was on some real bad boy Martin Lawrence, Will Smith-ish, you know what I'm saying? We ride together. We die together. Bad boys for life, okay? 
So in the next scene, okay, meet you know what I'm saying he's driving down, you know what I'm saying around the streets, okay, it's dark as f, you know, and this long as old school, okay, long behind old school kind of you know corners him in a sense, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know the make or model, I mean. <sighs> Please believe me, I'm, I'm not a dude, so I don't know all the making models of those old schools, okay? But anywho, he realized it's Pat, okay? And so he gets in the car, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of plastic going on covering the seats, okay? And I'm like, well, did it come like this? Or, you know, did they put it down? You know what I'm saying? It looks real grandma couch-ish, you know what I'm saying, growing up in the hoods, you know, of uh, the United States, okay, you would see that plastic, that thick plastic, okay, that you get stuck on, okay, it's not cool, it is not cool trying to take a nap in the summertime, and you're sticky, you're sweating, and you just regret the whole nap, you know, when you wake up, because you're just like, ah, ah. <laughs> you're struggling to get up, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to figure out exactly at what point did people stop putting plastic on their couches or taking the plastic off, I should say. When did that happen? Do you guys know when did that start to happen? Because, you know, thank God. Like, who was that one person who was like, F this, YOLO, Drake. <laughs> let's take the plastic off. Let's, you know, live a little. Let's let's be dangerous, okay? So, yeah, y'all. So, yeah, he had the plastic around and we know you know by watching a lot of gangster television you know what i'm saying that plastic in a car it means you know what i'm saying there may be about some blood splatter you know and it's easy to clean up you know what i'm saying and not mess up the vehicle but long story short yeah pat is like yo bro you pass due on your bills okay you pass due you ain't never been late what's going on what's going on here okay <laughs> so meach he was like bro i mean my brother just got shot I'm over here trying to get revenge. I'm looking for revenge. Oh, summer 16th. Oh, summer 15th. Whatever year that was. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Pat was like, yo, bro, that's a personal problem, okay? Maybe you should have, you know what I'm saying, tried to schedule some sick time or, you know what I'm saying, some vacation time or whatnot. Yeah, you know, you did it. So, therefore, I'm going to need my bread. I'm going to need my money, my moolah, my cheese, my cheddar, okay? And you got six days, okay? Not a week. You got six days on um, coming for that ass, okay? This gun right here in your face is your alarm clock, okay? And it's going to start ringing, okay, when time is up. And so um, during the scene, <clears throat> Meech, you know, he was a little scared, okay? And he had a little flashback of J-Mo all bloody and whatnot. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, is he, he's scared? Is he regretting his choices? Is he thinking this is his, you know, karma or whatnot? What's going on, Meech? What's going on in your brain, son? And so, yeah, he gets out of the car and Pat, you know, was like, yeah, this is the way for, for me to keep these fools on, you know, under me, okay? Because, you know, his homeboy was driving and he was like, you know, they won't be able to pay you back. And he was like, yeah, this is why. This is a setup, okay? This is why, okay? I want to keep them under me. You know what I'm saying? Pat is acting like the man, okay? He's acting like Uncle Sam. He's acting like the master, okay? I don't like that. I don't like that, Pat, okay? I don't like it. Anywho, we back at the house, okay? And so... A welcome home party for tea is occurring, okay? We got the mama, the papa, and you know what I'm saying? We got the baby mother, we got the baby, and we got Pastor Snoop, y'all. Now, I don't know how I feel about Snoop. Don't get me wrong. I love I love Snoop as the rapper or what have you, an actor for the most part, but I don't know how he is fitting for this role. Of course, we know 50 Cent and Snoop, you know what I'm saying? They have, you know, a relationship musically and whatnot. So I can see how he got the job, but I'm like, I don't know if this is, I'm feeling this pairing. I don't know if I'm feeling this casting or whatnot, but you know, I'm just going to rock with it. You know, Snoop, he has on, you know, this little wig, this little wig fro with these little pork chop sideburns. And it's looking really weird. My husband was very bothered about how this wig looked, okay? And I was like, well, you know, they had to fit all them dreads Snoop got <laughs> in this wig. So this is why it's looking all bunchy and whatnot. But yeah, I digress, okay? And so, you know, the pastor, he is praying, you know, over the family, okay? And the mother is very enamored. She is very just taken aback by the pastor. And I'm like, mm, mom, you giving him real, like, you know, just googly eyes. And, you know, the daddy, he don't like that. He don't like that, okay? 
So they are, you know, surrounded and forming a circle, holding hands. And, you know, the dad is eyeing, you know, how tightly the mom and the pastor is holding hands. And honestly, I didn't think anything of it. But the dad, you know, he's feeling away. He's got a lot of things going on up in the house that's, you know, altering his feelings and his ego. So, you know, the pastor is asking about, you know, the case. I'm not case, Laura. I'm jumping ahead. He's asking about, you know, how... Terry's eye is, you know, and the mom was like, you know, the doctors, you know, they did what they can. And the father was like, nah, they kind of effed up. So, you know, he, Snoop was like, hey, my niece just graduated, you know what I'm saying, from law school. Here is her court. Here is her court, okay? You know, he was like, you know, we can figure something out. But yeah, this is another way for the pastor to kind of, you know what I'm saying, get what he want, you know what I'm saying, get his little piece of the pie, you know, pastor like things, okay? So, this is going to be interesting, you know. In regards to them filing a lawsuit, possibly, you know what I'm saying, with the hospital. Of course, I know a little bit of background about what happened in real life, but I am not going to share that right now. So, you know, Michi comes in and the dad was like, mm, what you doing here, bro? And so he's like, I'm coming to see about my brother, like, relax. So he's like, let me see them keys. So he takes the house key off Michi's key ring and pretty much says, now you can come through the door in the future like you a guest because you don't live here no more. You don't live here in Timor, okay? And I would have been like, man, F you, daddy, long with your raggedy behind house. But you know what I'm saying? I probably would have said that on the inside because, you know, his dad would have definitely slapped him up if he would have said that. But, of course, Meech, all he can do is take that ish, okay? And so maybe later on, you know, a few minutes later, Meech and uh, T, they meet up, look like down the street or whatnot. And, uh, yeah, T was like, yo, bro, I want 50 50, okay, I want 50 50 profit off of this business. And honestly, I never thought about the the percentage, you know, the the you know, the pay, you know, what's going on in terms of their organization and their accounting department, okay? Because I automatically assumed that it was 50 50, but now that I think about it, Meech, he was probably like, I'm older, you know what I'm saying? I brought you in the game, you kind of low key under me, even though we brothers. So Meech was probably getting, you know what I'm saying, 70% or what have you. I'm not sure of the split, but yeah, I never thought about the the dynamic in terms of the money. But yeah, T was like, I'm all in, okay? I don't lost my eye for this game, okay? I need to pay these doctor bills, okay, and whatnot, because we had no insurance plan. You always set me up with no Blue Cross, Blue Shield situation. So, yeah, I'm going to need more money, okay? I'm not going to need, you know what I'm saying, just a cut of what we're getting. We are in this together, okay? I'm being full-fledged in this ish, okay? So, you know, me, she low-key agrees, and, you know, we're going to see how that, you know, evolves in the future, okay? So... Meech, you know, explains to T like, hey, um, yeah, I know you, you know, trying to get your money up and whatnot, but we have to get money up for Pat, okay? Because Pat, Pat, he said we passed due and we have six days to pay him back. And Terry was like, mm, the way our funds look, uh, yeah, that's probably impossible. So he, you know, pretty much discussed this article in the newspaper about how the drug use in the factories, you know what I'm saying, it's increasing. And so, of course, this is the second time he is mentioning that because he mentioned uh, the factory workers in episode one uh, when they was going into the game to meet uh, the 12th Street Boys. So, yeah, I knew this was going to come back around because I hate to mention power, but power has trained us to think and to understand that every word, every camera shot, you know, just every line is in this, you know, in a show for a purpose and a reason. And everything is bound to come back full circle. So, yeah, I'm pretty much trained <laughs> by anything probably 50 Cent or, you know, anybody in stars <laughs> is involved in, you know, what I'm saying to think a certain way, unfortunately. And so also Terry mentions, hey, B. Mickey, he ain't visit me while I was in a hospital. You know what I'm saying? I would have loved, a, you know, a card, some arrangements, you know what I'm saying? Something. But he did not come. And so he's like, what's going on with him? Okay, what's going on? And so, yeah, uh, T was like, he all right. So he also, you know, ends up telling T about J-Mo. And uh, yeah, B. Mickey clipped him as well. So of course, T was frustrated. So yeah, this is going to be interesting because uh, yeah, B. Mickey kind of thinks he's the third brother. And this is going to be a problem. 
So we are, you know, witnessing the 12th Street crew, okay? They are having a company meeting, if you will, okay? And they are, you know, just recapping all of what has occurred in, you know, the past few days and whatnot. And they're discussing, hey, J-Mo is missing out here in these streets, okay? But Mel got beat to a pulp, you know what I'm saying? He is in the hospital pleading, you know what I'm saying, for his life, okay? And, um... One of the crew members is pretty much, you know, explaining everything. And so Lamar, he's kind of sitting next to him and he's like, you know, yo, like we need to make sure we're strategic. Okay. When it comes to, you know, I'm saying firing back because they all think it's the 50 boys. Okay. And I do want to note, you know, Lamar, he's coming up, you know, back into his, you know, Royal throne, you know, he got, you know, his ice going on. He got the rings, he got the watches, you know what I'm saying? But he does not have a haircut. I'm like, Lamar, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Okay. Like his hair just is not on point for me. I need you to do a Caesar or something. You know how the young boys, they have that the little, the little brush to kind of make sure the hair look kind of like, you know, like the Bart Simpson ish, you know, they just got the little, I don't know, spikes or what have you. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what the young boys be doing, but yeah, Lamar is just looking still unkept for me. You know what I'm saying? I don't like it, but of course, you know, it's, it's not really up to me, but yeah, maybe he likes the unkept look, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the flashy homeless look. So yeah, I don't know, but He's pretty much, you know, explaining, you know, what they should do in their plan. And so half of the crew was like, I ain't really feeling this plan, but we'll go along with it. You know what I'm saying? Until Vermeil gets back. Okay. So mind you, they are willing to follow Lamar until Vermeil gets back and healthy. I'm like, dang, Lamar, you low key just came in like on a Tuesday, okay, <laughs> and got this job, and you got promoted, okay, to CEO, okay, like, I am kind of low-key proud of you, sir, you, you are just, either everybody else is just dumb, <laughs> or he just smart as hell, like, yo, bro, like, he's a genius, okay, so back at the house, the dad, you know, he's coming home, you know, he, you know, has had a long day at the factory and what have you. And so the mom, she's sitting there in the kitchen, this cute little leopard dress. I'm like, okay, girl, give that to me. Give that to me. Okay. It was really cute. I feel like I had something similar. I don't know. Anywho, you know, she's looking all scrimped. Okay. And he's like, what now? And so <laughs> she's pretty much telling him like, yeah, um, the bank there, they're kind of coming down on us. Like we have an expiration date, you know what I'm saying? To pay, um, yeah, these bills because we is going to get kicked out. And I'm like, dang, girl, you couldn't let him, you know, just sit on the couch and just, you know, rest for a minute before you broke this down, you know? <laughs> like I am all for making sure your man feels like he's comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Making sure, you know what I'm saying, he is good when he comes home, you know what I'm saying? Get him something to drink, you know, give him a few moments to wind down and whatnot. But at the same time, the situation at hand, I mean, he may not, you know, be able to, you know, rest his feet on a home because they may not have a home. So yeah, I could understand her sense of emergency, <laughs> okay? And so we see T, his baby mother, and the baby, they're all, you know what I'm saying, on the couch, coddling the baby, and we get a little ring-a-ding-ding at the doorbell, and look who it is, okay? It's good cop, bad cop, and they are here to investigate, you know what I'm saying, what occurred at the shooting, because, you know, T, he's home, he's healthy, and they're trying to, you know, get some information, so clearly you can see Officer Crooked Cop, you know what I'm saying? He is trying to pretty much investigate, but not investigate because, you know, he is trying to portray these streets, okay? Because he is on the payroll, okay? And, um, yeah, the white cop, he's like, you know, really trying to investigate and do his job. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we've seen this dynamic before so many times. I'm low-key annoyed with it. Like, this is just like, um... Burke and Howard from Power Book 3. You know, we've seen this in training day. Like, I'm kind of over it, but I'm like, I have no choice but to go along with it at this point, okay? And so the white cop was like, hey, um, yeah, you pulled up in the hospital in the bins. Like, what, what's going on here? What's going on? So the father, he looks very uncomfortable when he says that. You know, he's like, what's whose car is that? And so the baby mother ends up taking the fall and say, hey, yeah, my uncle Troy, he gave me that as a baby shower gift. I'm like, dang, girl, a baby shower gift? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, come on, okay, with the lies. Come on with the lies, okay? But of course, the father, he ain't buying it. The cops ain't buying it. But yeah, it is it is what it is, okay? So 
She is, you know, riding and dying for her man, okay? She is doing what black women has been doing since the beginning of time, okay? And so, you know, they leave, the officers leave the house and the rookie, he's pressing, you know what I'm saying? Officer Crooked Cop, because he's like, yo, bro, like, what was that? Like, you was not really doing your job, okay? And so, <laughs> you know, Crooked Cop pretty much bossed on him. He was like, hey, bro, I've been running these streets, you know what I'm saying, if you, since you was a little itty bitty bitty boy, okay? So I'm gonna need you to chill out and let me do what needs to be done, okay? So yeah, this is this is going to be a relationship that's not gonna be, you know, really, you know, flourishing in the future, all right? So we see, you know, the 50 boys, they're posted up at the GLS plant. OK, I don't know if that's a real company or a fake one. It's probably fake. But yeah, they're pretty much trying to test out their little, um, yeah, their little, uh, what you call it, their new little spot. OK, because, you know, the factory dudes be smoking, they be smoking, y'all. And so they're not really making any money. The security is pressing them to leave. Yeah, this is not turning out to be a good plan at this point. So we had Cash Doll's house. I believe her name, her character name is Monique, okay? And Lamar is playing Monopoly with the little girl Zoe. And I'm like, okay, like those letters work. Those letters worked. And, you know, he's beating her. And, you know, they're kind of putting in some verbiage that pretty much is explaining the game about, you know, him, you know, taking the best, you know, corners and whatnot. So, you know, she ends up leaving to do her homework and Cash Doll was like, hey, what are we doing here? OK, what are we? OK, and Lamar, he pretty much say, I ain't going to worry. This is my family. And she looks like she was down with it. I'm like, for real, Cash Doll? For real? For real, girl, girl, girl. <laughs> like I was hella annoyed. I'm like, dang, that was quick. That was quick. He didn't even take you out to dinner or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, girl, let him woo you a little bit. Like, you can't be that easy. It's like she goes wherever the wind blows. And, yeah, she's... I had liked her. I had liked her, y'all. But, yeah, I'm pissed. I'm pissed at Cash Doll slash Monique, okay? But I like her little hair. It was cute. You know what I'm saying? She had a cute little fitted uh, little dress showing that body. Showing that body, girl. Girl, I ain't mad, Cash Doll. I ain't mad. <clears throat> so... Meech, he's over there at the factory checking up on the crew, seeing how the new plan's going. And they're pretty much saying, hey, bro, we ain't selling ish, okay? It's dry out here in these streets, okay? So Meech, he's frustrated because he's like, yo, bro, like we have a deadline. Why aren't we selling any drugs? Why are we not selling the drugs, okay? And, you know, security's been pressing them. They look hella obvious, okay? You know, factories, they're normally kind of like in their own little area in the town, like very deserted, no stores, no nothing, you know? And so we see from afar, we see, uh, yeah, Pat's car. He's acting like a damn <laughs> boogeyman just popping up, popping up everywhere. You know what I'm saying? He's like one of those micromanaging supervisors or managers at the job that you just can't stand to him. You know, you're like, dang, like, let me do my job. Let me do my job. Okay. Okay. It ain't even day three yet. Like, calm down, calm down, Pat. So, you know, Meech, he, you know, is assessing the situation and he, you know, looks around and he sees, oh, okay, it's lunchtime. So he notices the employees of the factory going to the food trucks for lunch, okay? And of course, you know, his wheels is turning, his wheels is turning. I like that, Meech. I like it a lot, okay? And so he sees uh, there's one food truck that's outside of the gate. And he approaches him, was like, dude, you know, ain't you trying to get this money up in here? Ain't you trying to get this money? He was like, nah, bruh, I ain't paying 500. I ain't paying a five. I ain't paying a five. <laughs> oh, Lord, Martin reference, if y'all know what I'm saying. So he was like, yeah, um, I'm not, I'm not going to pay $500 to uh, go inside of the gate. I'm going to stay outside of the gate where it's free, okay? But, you know, that's not working because he, he has no customers. He has no customers, okay? And so, you know, this guy, you know, his name is David. That's his government name. But everybody call him Fonzo. I'm like, I don't like his name. Like, his name gives me real snitch vibes, okay? Anything like Fonzo, Alonzo, Orlando, like, I thought those were Orlando hoes. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I just thought about the wire. Oh God, we bet he was one of my favorite characters. But yeah, he. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Fonzo, aka Orlando, aka <laughs> David. Actually, okay. 
So back at the precinct, okay, we see the rookie cop. He is pressing, you know, crooked cop because he's handing him, um, yeah, a mugshot of um, J Mo. He was like, yeah, this this guy has been missing, and yeah, do you got you do you know anything about him? So of course, crooked cop is playing dumb. He was like, oh, it's very interesting. You don't know him, okay? You know, especially since he is the direct, you know, what I'm saying, uh, enemy of uh, the Fifty Boys. You know, what I'm saying. And, uh, you know, since you've been patrolling this area for a very, 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 very long time, um, I would assume that you know who he is. So are you not good at your job? Are you not good at your job? <laughs> he is really starting to aggravate me, y'all, but I can't be too mad. You know, he, he's doing his job or trying to do his job. But yeah, he he's not feeling his partner, okay? So they actually, you know, get called for a meeting. So long story short, there, you know, some things that are, you know, shaking up and around the department, okay? So they are introduced to state police uh, Beckwith, okay? She is a woman in charge, okay? So you know I'm already feeling that. But yeah, she is going to be their new head, their new supervisor. And they're pretty much... Um, discussing how they have this new operation called Drano, okay? And their purpose is to ID and dismantle drug organizations in the area, okay? And for the next 18 months, they are, you know, providing as much resources as they possibly can get, you know, to, you know, lock them up, lock them up, Danny, okay? They are trying to clean up the neighborhood, okay? And yeah, so the rookie, he was excited. He was like, yes, finally we get to arrest some folk, okay? <laughs> he didn't say that out loud, but internally, I just know he was just happy, okay? And so Crooked Cop, he shook. He was like, dang, they, they, they about to get me. Like, I, I'm, I'm included in all this. Like, I, I, I'm stressed. He is stressed, y'all. He's stressed. So, you know, we hear Meech, he's narrating. And he's given us a history lesson, if you will, you know, and I like learning new things. So he proceeds to tell us, you know, after the, I believe, 67 riots, the white folk, they hauled ass, okay? They was like, nah, bro, they went and moved away from Detroit. And um, in 73, Coleman Young was their first black mayor, okay? And they, you know, inserted a cute little old clip and you know he was giving me real joe clark vibes okay he was like all the drug dealers everybody that's wearing flashy suits you know anybody that's scamming and stealing we want them out we want them out okay so he was really on his joe clark ish okay and he also mentioned you know 85 and 86 you know detroit was the drug capital sorry the murder capital of the U.S. And, you know, that was around the time where, you know, they started in the drug game. I'm like, ooh, y'all really started when the block was hot, okay? So, yeah, I like ne learning new things about different cities, okay? You know, I don't know too, too much about Detroit. I do know about, I believe, it's, it's a Kwame Brown, which was the uh, the mayor that uh, got arrested. He was doing a lot of, lot of Suge Knight-ish. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to leave that be, okay, Detroit? <laughs> You know, I'm gonna leave that be. I ain't trying to, you know, tell all y'all business, even though you know it is public knowledge of what have you. But I am definitely enjoying learning more about Detroit, and you know, I love learning about other cities, which reminds me, Snowfall. They're gonna tap into Arkansas, I believe, um, in terms of probably their next season. So I love learning about new cities because you know we tend to focus on LA and New York, and as much as I love New York, and because it's my home. You know, my stumping grounds, you know, it, it tends to be these shows tend to be oversaturated with, you know, specific cities and, and states and what have you. So I like, you know, learning about a new city and state and, you know, the background and the history, because, you know, this is loosely based and I should say loosely based <laughs> on a true story. OK, so, yeah, um, we're back at the uh, plant. OK. And so Meech, you know, he's, you know, still talking to the chef, you know, that has the food truck. And I'm still triggered from food trucks because I got food poisoning from a food truck uh, last Christmas or was it two Christmases ago? And my, you know, brilliant behind decided to get um, a lobster roll and got real sick, y'all. And it was my fault because I was rushing and I didn't plan accordingly. You know what I'm saying? I was running errands and hey, here's a food truck. But the name of the food truck was similar to um, another company or another restaurant that I was familiar with. So it didn't dawn on me until I got the food. I was like, oh, this is not the same company. But I ate the food anyway and got sick. Yeah, y'all, that, that was not a good look. So, yeah, I'm a little triggered when it comes to food trucks. But yeah, I'm going to let that be, okay? 
So yeah, he's chopping up his food and Meech and Terry, you know, are approaching him and he was like, what y'all want? Okay. Because I know this permit ain't come for free. And I'm like, bruh, bruh. So you let them pay for a permit before you uh, understood exactly what they wanted. You thought it was a free gift or something, you know, charity case. You know what I'm saying? They're not over here trying to do community service, okay? And I'm like, you you did not read and, and understand and determine the, the term and conditions of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, this situation. I, I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little pissed off at the, the chef Lonzo, Fonzo, whatever. Um, yeah, because he should have been figured out what the hell they wanted before he accepted that. Like, bruh bruh but pretty much you know me to let them know like hey you know you're gonna get some money you're gonna get paid off of us using your food truck okay and you know he was like oh i do want my own restaurant you know what i'm saying you know i do you know want to get me a sylvia's or a justin's or you know <laughs> sorry my man interpretation it's horrible so you know they pretty much ease and coach the, you know, guy to, you know, come around, you know, to see the light, to see the light. But Meech did say something I like. He was like, hey, my brother and I was young. We used to always, uh, you know, dream and make pictures uh, about, you know, what um, we want in the future. You know what I'm saying? A vision board, if you will. Okay. And it's cute because it's kind of still tying in the see it, touch it, obtain it mindset. Okay. They saw things. And they was able to touch it and obtain it, okay? Because they are visionaries, okay? They are drug entrepreneurs, but they are visionaries first, okay? So we see Fermel's a little annoying behind. He's in the hospital all effed up, y'all. He actually looks worse than uh, T did, even though T got shot in the eye. Like, I don't know. What's going on here? Okay, so we see someone walking in, and they're always panning on these boots, y'all. These boots that Lamar be having on, Okay. So, um, yeah, he has, you know, some balloons and some flowers all covering his face. And so when uh, Fermel realizes who it is, he's like, help, help. You know, he's trying to get the little button, the emergency button. And yeah, Fermel is unable to do so because Lamar, he's like, nah, bruh, look here. Listen here, okay? I'm going to need you to leave town, okay? Because if you don't leave town and if you stay here, it's going to be a problem problem because we remember when they had the little conference meeting with the 12th street gang they agreed to follow lamar you know what i'm saying until Fermel gets back so he needs to make sure Fermel does not come back so he can stay on top okay he does not want to be the interim ceo okay he doesn't want to be you know what i'm saying a substitute you know what i'm saying he wants to have this position full time long term okay so, yeah, he pretty much scared for Mel to the point where he started to piss himself. And, yeah, it was, it was a little alarming. Even though I don't like, you know, saying the, the character for Mel plays, I felt a little bad for the little guy. But I am curious as to why Lamar ends up, you know, only um, just torturing people. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure if he meant to kill T. I mean, he was pointing from, to the head, so he probably was. But he's leaving for Mel alive. And I'm like, why? He might as well just kill him the first damn time. Like, I don't know if because he's old school player and don't like to kill people or he just have a specific specific, la, 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 specific rule uh to keep people alive i don't know what his deal is you know who knows lamar he crazy so yeah y'all we're gonna we're gonna see what's gonna happen with Fermel, but i think it is a mistake when you leave anyone alive that you threaten their manhood i mean you f this guy up twice twice and the second time was in the hospital okay dang ugh. And I'm like, where's his family? Where's Fermel's family? Where's his friends? Okay, what's going on? Okay, so now we're at the strip club. Okay, Meech and T, they're over there at the strip club. T is annoyed. He ain't feeling it. He, you know, doesn't seem like he wants to partake in any of the strippers. Okay, but Meech, he was like, nah, he is getting, you know what I'm saying, a nice little lappy dance or whatever. He's going over, you know, a plan with the stripper. Okay, I believe her name was Pound Cake. All right. I like that name, Pound Cake. Okay, that's cute. I mean, as I think most women always, you know, tries to uh, determine what their stripper name would be, y'all. So that was cute. That was cute. And so, yeah, T was like, why are we here? Okay. And so Terry, um, you know, was trying to figure out what's the point. So Meech was explaining like, yo, bro, um, yeah, this is another spot that the um, 
employees of the factory frequent. So she's going to point me out to who likes to smoke so we can have another, you know, area of revenue. OK. And so next thing we see, Pat pops up behind them <laughs> like a little drug lord, superhero boogeyman. And he looks very unraveled. Like, you know, he has a, a strong sense of emergence. And he was like, why are you guys here at this raggedy strip club? Okay. You are wasting my time. Okay. I need my money. He was like, since you guys are wasting my time, I'm going to move up. I'm going to move up your due date. Okay. You have three days now, three days. Okay. And me just like, dang, what's going on? I mean, they've been under Pat for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, dang, Pat, like what's, what's going on over? So I thought we had a good little relationship here. Okay. But long story short, Pound Cake, she kind of sniffs out and shows me like he's, you know, where the smoker is. And he gives the guy, you know what I'm saying, a little sample. You know how like, you know, at the food court, the little, you know, Oriental or Asian people. I'm sorry, is that... Is that politically incorrect? I'm sorry. But you know how they give like the, you know, samples of the teriyaki chicken and whatnot. So she, you know, he kind of gave him, you know, something to, to, you know, have a little parting gift so he can tell everybody about how good the drugs is or whatnot. So we at the house and yeah, the dad is playing with, you know, his grandson and he's low key pressing the baby mom, but like a cop, you know what I'm saying? About the bins that so-called uncle Tony or what have you gave her. So, you know, she's low key doing a good job line, but the dad, he sees through all that. Okay. And Terry comes in and, you know, figures out, Hey, you know, what's going on here. And so they kind of low key cover for each other, but yeah, you can tell the baby mama is tired of lying. Okay. And so we see Meat Cheese on the street somewhere in the middle of the day smoking weed or whatever, creating a little hot box, if you will. And so he see, uh, you know, a car passes and kind of stops, you know, parallel to his. And so his mom uh, goes out to, you know, of the car. So apparently she just got home from work. You know what I'm saying? She done hitched a ride or what have you. And uh, she was like, Meach, I told you to stop smoking in front of the house. He was like, dang, mama, like... I ain't got no choice. You kicked me out. She was like, well, that is, you know, you made your bed and you have to lie in it. And I'm like, Meech, bruh, you had a nice ass Benz. Why ain't you ain't got no apartment? No apartment. I'm just saying like, bruh, priorities. Like, this is, this is some black mess. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I hate saying it, but it's some black mess. You got a Benz, okay? It ain't cheap. The gas ain't cheap. My Benz gas is hella expensive. Like, it's, it's a lot. Maintenance is a lot, okay? An oil change is $99, okay? Okay, even though I have to get one once a year. But you know what I'm saying? It's still a lot, you know what I'm saying? So you can't get you a cute little apartment? Come on, Meech, grow the fuck up. I'm sorry, I mean to curse, but that's that was in my heart, in my heart, okay? Long story short, he pretty much tells the mama I done paid the mortgage and she was pissed and, you know, she was like, I'm not sure what I'm going to tell your father, but we're going to keep this between you and I for now, okay? We got a little secret. We got a little secret, okay? So we're at the factory and, you know, me just, you know, you know, coaching the uh, chef about, you know, the new, you know, addition to the menu, okay? And they're calling it a stone burger, okay? A Happy Meal, if you will, you know what I'm saying? The Coke and, and the crack is like the little toy that comes in the Happy Meal, okay? So, Kato is, you know, pressing B. Mickey about him and Meech's relationship because, you know, B. Mickey, he was smoking a little blunt, blunt and what have you. And, um, yeah, uh, oh boy, Meech, he kind of, you know, took it from him and stomped on it. And I'm like, oh, you wasting good weed. But he told B. Mickey, like, come on, stay in the game. You got to be focused, focused. And I like Meech. I like the way Meech thinks, okay? And so that's what caused, you know, Kato to kind of inquire what's going on you know what i'm saying an organization and you know he <laughs> be mickey was like we fan we may fight but that's still my nigga that's still my dude so yeah i I'm, i wasn't sure why she was you know pressing him i mean it seemed normal but we're gonna see why why old girl was trying to sniff around like a little hound dog or what have you so, you know, business is booming at the food truck, y'all. B. Mickey and Kato, they are working in the truck as well. You know, B. Mickey, he's, you know, fulfilling the orders, putting the crack inside of the bags. And Kato, she's taking the orders. The chef, he cooking, you know, I'm saying the, the food and whatnot. So it's a good little situation for now. So, you know, the line is thick, y'all. The line is thick like a little club and whatnot. So, you know, the guy that uh, was in the strip club, he comes up, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, I want five stone burgers, a.k.a. Happy Meals uh, <laughs> with fries. And, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, dang, he got five orders. So I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? He's ordering for his crew and whatnot. But I think that is all for him. And my husband was like, yo, he's going to be dead tonight, okay? Like, he's getting a little, you know what I'm saying? 
a little hooked are we you know what i'm saying so but i'm like hold up are y'all y'all taking this crack during y'all lunch break or after work or do y'all do like part you know what i'm saying one one rock during your lunch break <laughs> And the rest, like, how is this working, guys? Because you guys are in a plant, okay? You guys are making automobiles. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder how the recall uh, situation was occurring. Because y'all got people smoking crack and building cars, you know what I'm saying? So I'm sure there was a lot of recalls going on, you know what I'm saying, with those, you know, vehicles or what have you, okay? And so, Meech, he's, you know, at another spot, you know what I'm saying, with the other crew, you know what I'm saying, his other, you know, part of the organization, the other department. And he notices one of his, you know, crew members, he's talking to a white woman, you know what I'm saying, inside of a car. And he pulls him away like, yo, bro, we we don't sell to the white folk, okay? White folk bring problems, okay? Detroit is all black. So if you see a white person, she's probably the popo or working for the popo, okay? So I like these rules, you know what I'm saying? I like these rules. It works, it works, okay? So he was like, yo, we got a little contest going on, guys. We have a little contest. Whoever sells the most crack, they get my Rolex. Yes. Cute little incentive here, okay? And so everybody happy, all pumped up or whatever. And we see Pat rolling down the street lurking. I'm like, dang, Pat. Dang, Pat. Let a nigga breathe. <laughs> so the cop, crooked cop, he pulls up, you know what I'm saying, and fakes, you know, arrests. Meech and Terry and he low-key tells them like um yeah there's a new task force going on here and yeah you guys need to you know take this as a warning so Meech was like this is what we have you for he was like well I, I don't have much of a reach going on so yeah I'm gonna need you guys to be careful but oh yeah anywho um what happened to J-Mo okay because when I dropped him off to you he was alive so of course Meech he plays dumb and yeah, but the cop ain't, you know, he's not buying it. He's not buying it. This is going to be an issue, okay? And so, uh, Terry, you know, he was like, hey, what, what's going on? Um, yeah, if, um, uh, J-Mo body comes up, you know, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. So, we're at Pat's front slash, you know, his little spot, I believe is a barbershop. So, you know, um, Meech, he comes up, you know what I'm saying? He's delivering the money. He's delivering the, the money, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm happy. I'm like, okay, he's going ahead and, you know, paying off his debt. This is good. We like to pay our bills. So, you know, the guy at the front, he was like, you know, Pat, he back there, you know, with his homeboy and some other chicks. Y'all don't know what's going on back there, but I'm going to buzz you in. So he walks in and he says, he sees, you know, everybody looking all days and, and, you know, weird or whatnot. And so, yeah, he announces himself in the room, Meech, you know what I'm saying? So Pat, he is high, y'all. He is high as F. And I'm like, Pat, Pat. What rule, what rule was this in the Ten Crack Commandments? Was that number one? I'm not sure, guys. I have to replay the song in my head. But yeah, it's one of the Crack Commandments. And you don't effed up. You're getting high on your own supply. And he proceeds, you know, when he notices Meech in the room, he proceeds to hide the crack pipe and, you know, the remnants and whatnot. I'm like, oh, my God. And Meech looks so disappointed. Like, he has so many emotions going on. I could tell all in his face. He just looks hurt and sad. And like, dang, like, he was my role model. What's going on, bro? Like, why? How did we get here? Ugh, I was annoyed, okay? And so, yeah, um, you know, you could tell uh, <laughs> Pat, he, you know, he was happy to see the money. But my theory is Pat messed up with his connect because he's getting high now. And he has a sense of urgency. So that's why he's pressing Meech to get all this money, okay? Mark my words. So now we're at the bowling alley and it's lit, y'all. It's Terry's uh coming home party, you know what I'm saying? So we we got a lot of people going on. It's it's a good time, okay? And so we see uh Terry, he apparently asked his teacher to bring his homework to the bowling alley. I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. That's so cute. That's kind of like a little turn on, whatever, because you smore and you sell drugs, okay? The 22 year old B would I love that, okay? I'm just saying every girl has their little bad boy face, okay? And so Kato, okay, she in the bathroom and she comes out of the stall, okay? And look who is out, you know, waiting for her and by the sink, Lamar. So apparently, okay, they have some little good faith deal, quote unquote, said by Lamar. And she wants to know everything that's going on with Meech's organization. And I'm like, oh, Kato, for real, girl? For real? You a mole? 
You a mole out here in these streets. I don't know why you got that leather, that red leather jacket on. Because you, you the devil. You playing both sides. And this is not going to be good. Oh, my God. I'm so mad. Her and Cash Doll, a.k.a. Monique, pissed me off this episode. I'm like, hey, dang, come on. Come on, Terry. You know, his baby mama, she the only one holding down the fort. You know, being real out here in these streets. Okay? So, the baby mother, you know what I'm saying, uh, she tells T like she's ready to go, okay? And it's just about to get lit. I'm like, dang, like I feel like that was low-key selfish. I'm like, dang, this is Porty. He can't even leave his Porty early. So he, you know, flags, you know, waves little keys in her hand and told her she can go take the bins or whatever. And at first I was just like, why is she tripping? Like, this is his Porty. Let him go, okay? Because, you know, her mom was babysitting a little baby and she had to go. So she was mad. But, uh, yeah, long story short, he gets home and she was like, dang, like I'm riding for you. You can't, you know, walk me to the car. And I'm like, yeah, she is right. He was rude as fuck for that. Like he could have walked us, especially, you know, it's war going on. Like you should have been more precautious. You should have had somebody else drive her, but they're low key, like minors. So who all knows how to drive in their crew? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, you know, understandable how she was pissed. So they go back and forth about, you know, Who's, you know, giving, you know, fellatio to who and, you know, how she can't have sex for, you know, a few more weeks because, you know, there's a little grace period after having a baby. And I think they put this part in because I feel like he's going to go outwards to uh, get some sex and whatnot because, you know, what I'm saying he's a young lad and, you know, it may be Lala, maybe somebody that he's trying to, you know, get up on. But, yeah, I think they put that in there for a reason. OK, but let me backtrack a little bit, because before he gets home. Um, yeah, y'all, 12th Street was in the building at the party, okay, and Lamar was sitting there, and yeah, everybody, I'm like, oh, oh, is, is this going to be a little fight going on? But yeah, it's clear that Lamar is ahead of 12th Street, and everybody figures out, like, oh, okay, you was the reason why, you know, Formel's probably in the hospital, you know what I'm saying, why, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, you know, T probably got shot, so they're figuring Lamar out, so yeah, this is going to be interesting, okay, so... Uh, at the parents' house, you know, the father comes home and he was like, yeah, uh, I tried to go to the bank to get a deal on this mortgage and it's been paid. Uh, you went to the church, didn't you? She was like, no, Meech paid the mortgage. He was like, oh, really? Oh, really? Well, we need to stop the, you know, payment or what have you. She was like, we can't. We can't reverse it. So he was like, oh, you want Meech to run this household? Oh, okay. Here are the key. I'm going to let, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And I'm like, damn, Pops, like, I get, I get where he's coming from. At the same time, I'm like, just think of it as a little gift. I'm, I'm just saying it's a cute little gift. You know what I'm saying? You, you raised the boy. I mean, let him do something nice for, for y'all, but he has his morals. So I get it. But uh, yeah, Terry tries to stop them from fighting. He's like, mom, dad, come on, stop fighting, stop fighting. <laughs> He was, you know, feeling a little white boy ish. It was kind of low key, you know, 80s sitcom situation going on. But yeah, the dad takes his key off the ring. And I'm like, oh, this is symbolic because he took the key from Meech early in the episode. So yeah, yeah, he leaves. And yeah, this is going to be interesting. You know, nobody wins when the family feuds. Okay. So we at Cash Doll's house. So Meech, he's banging on the door. Like, you know, she opens it and cracks it. She was like, what are you doing here? Okay. And she's treating him like how she was uh, treating Lamar in episode one or what have you. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So long story short, he was like, yo, we got to talk about Lamar. Okay. Like he is a problem. And you know, no and behold, you know, Lamar opens up the door like, okay, I'm the problem. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. And yeah, so she back with Lamar. I'm like, Cash Doll, you trash. You trash. I mean, I understand you got a history with old boy. But I'm like, I don't know, y'all. I don't even want to get into it because it's so much to unpack there in that little situation. Like, I'll be here all day. This is already a long review, okay? So, yeah. Um, Lamar, long story short, he is the issue for uh, Meech at this point because you done stole his girl. Well, stole Joe girl back, but that was kind of his girl. I don't know if he was a rebound. I don't know, y'all, but it is a lot. A little love, tri love triangle going on here. And Lamar is low-key all up in his organization. I don't know how much Kato gave him because at first she didn't want to give too much because I think she's starting to take a liking to Meech and the crew, but she's scared as, you know what, of Lamar. So I'm like, how much information did you give Lamar? Oh, Kato, oh my God, this is going to be a hot mess, y'all. But yeah, I have a theory about uh, Pat. I feel like since Meech does not um, trust him any longer, 
um, or I may not trust him any longer because he's kind of a throwaway at this point now that he's using. I feel like the crooked cop is going to need something, you know, to satisfy uh, his superior. So I do feel like Meech will possibly give up uh, Pat to crooked cop. So, you know, what I'm saying that can kind of, you know, get Meech, I mean, get Pat out the way of Meech. And then also give the cops somebody to arrest. And I, it would be so dope if, you know, the brother, you know what I'm saying, arrest the other brother, you know what I'm saying? Because they're real brothers. I'm like, oh, that's cute and cheesy. I would like that. And um, yeah, this is a constant uh, theme between B. Mickey and um, B. Mickey and T. They're kind of fighting for positions for number two. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of fighting actually for position, work positions and familial familial uh, position with Meech. You know what I'm saying? They both want to be that that brother, that that number two, that next to, you know, of kin and whatnot. So yeah, this is going to be interesting, y'all. And I'm sorry, I'm still rambling. But yeah, I hope you guys are still listening. But yeah, this was a great episode. I enjoyed it a lot. And yeah, please like this video, leave a comment, subscribe if you are not already subscribed. And I appreciate you guys listening and you have a great blessed week and I will see you guys on the next one. Deuces.